So today, to follow up on our discussions about soundproofing, I wanted to extend soundproofing into the realm of privacy because the two things are really not the same. A lot of people think they are. They think if you design a soundproof space, it's going to be private. Well, and it's true if it was truly soundproof, which would mean like STC 85 or some really, really high level where you would be truly soundproof. But let's talk about apartments and let's talk about residential multifamily codes and how those apply to privacy. Most building codes are based on the International Building Code, which is IBC, and most of them call for an STC rating of 50 for adjacencies. So you got a wall that they're recommending between you and your neighbor that's STC 50. And that would seem like it might be adequate, but it really may not be. And here's, here's kind of the rub with this particular um, code. This was developed back quite a while back. And the assumption that was made, I think, when they developed this, of course, I don't know, because I don't know the guy who developed it personally, we've never met, but I'm guessing. Houses and general noise levels in older residential, because of the way windows leaked air, they also leaked sound. So if you were sitting in your apartment, you had sound from outdoors, which to your ears masks the sounds of other things that are going on. Newer buildings, unfortunately, have very, very high rated windows for thermal reasons, especially a lot of these renos that are getting done where they take like an old warehouse and convert it into modern apartments or condominiums. And all of a sudden you got a really, really quiet space. So privacy is actually a function of not just wall design, but also of background noise. So if you can imagine the older buildings with all the background noise there was due to windows, noisier furnaces, noisier appliances, noisier everything. And now you're in a modern apartment, kind of like this studio I'm sitting in. It's extremely quiet in here. It's about an RC25 noise level. The way privacy works is you take the STC of the wall, the actual STC in the field, which we'll talk about that too, and you add that to the background noise. And if that number is 75 or higher, then you would be considered to have privacy. If that number is lower than that, either one, so your wall is not high enough or your noise level is lower, whatever that offset is, you have to make it up. So let's say the background noise is 25 instead of 35. Well, now you need a better wall to make up for it. So the reality is in a lot of apartment buildings, especially in bedrooms, it's quiet enough that an STC 50 design wall is not adequate. And an STC 50 design wall in the field, if it's built really well, comes out about 45, which means you need at least 30 dB of background noise for you to have a sense of privacy. Now, 10 points of STC to your ear is twice as loud. So what you're really saying is you need twice as much background noise to make up the privacy in that situation. So I was recently out at a, an apartment building investigating a complaint. The walls are really measuring in the low 40s, which means there's construction problems and other issues. But what if you were in an apartment like that with relatively no, low noise and walls that really aren't adequate and then you've got a neighbor, and you got a neighbor who likes to read poetry. And they like to read poetry kind of all the time. And they read the same piece of poetry over and over and over again. And you have to put up with it. No! 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 So this neighbor of yours likes to read this kind of poetry next door to you all the time so you're trying to go to bed and this is go and well to be fair we're sharing a wall and there's a door in it so let's close the door okay so that door gets us approximately let's say stc 30. 
So when, when this guy continues to read poetry, it's pretty obviously coming through the door. So let's try to make it a little bit better. Let's build a wall. So now we've got the apparent performance of a wall that would be typical in most apartments between a bedroom and an adjacency. As long as you got your playback set loud enough, you can hear what I'm hearing. So the question is, if this is what they're building and this meets building code, what do I do when I don't want to hear this guy read poetry? Besides going next door and possibly shooting him, which is eh, it's probably not legal. And he's actually kind of semi-famous, so it may not be a good idea to do that. So what other options do you have if you are in that apartment and you want to sleep and Poetry Boy is going at it next door? Well, there are things like this. And we all love things that come from Amazon. This is one of them. And what this is called is a personal noise masking system. If you don't have the background noise, you can make it. Now, the way I'm doing it right here, putting it in front of me is not the ideal situation, but what you want to do is create a level of noise. Now, that's an actual RC40 background noise, which means my current condition, I'm exceeding it, so I'm no longer hearing intelligible sound from next door. Now, if I ramp this up higher and don't mind hearing that noise, that works well. Now, the reality with this particular device, which we will hold up to the other camera so people can see it, these are reasonably inexpensive. These are like 38 bucks on Amazon. So when you take a device like this and you take him, you can shut him up with one of these near your bed or better yet, a pair of them on both sides of your bed in the corners because if you put it in a corner, it will spread the sound out, warm up the sound, and will give you a much better sense of not hearing your neighbor. Now, another thing that goes on in these modern apartments, which is something that's not being talked about, is flat screen televisions. Now, the average flat screen TV, all the speakers are built into, imagine this is it, all the speakers are built into the back of the TV. And the TV is like, let's say, six inches from the wall. And I'm sitting, let's say, 15, 20 feet away, well, that's a small apartment. Now, how about 10 feet away? I've done measurements, and the sound pressure behind the TV is approximately 15 dB louder than it is where I'm sitting and watching the TV. So that's another problem where you're getting all of this noise coming at your wall because the TV next door is literally firing its sound at the wall. Modern apartments are all having this problem. The leases don't address it. I want to shut this guy up. He's, he's really bugging me back there. Okay, I muted him, which is something you don't get in most apartments. So when you get these situations, you got the TV going, you got these different things going, noise masking of some sort is really your only option. The other thing that works well is to play some music in your bedroom, if you don't mind that. Um, or play your TV. It's kind of like being at a hotel. You hear the neighbors in the hotel. You turn your TV on, you turn your air conditioning on, and they kind of go away acoustically. Now, the reality, though, with this is it's a double-edged sword, and this gets into some areas that are sensitive, so we don't want to get too risque here. But especially in bedrooms, people have activities that sometimes are noisy. And assuming you're in your bedroom, and you've got a bunch of these things running and you feel like you got some privacy because you got some you got some good old noise going on here but on the other side of that wall where your neighbor lives they don't have one of these which means if you get noisy in your bedroom they're going to hear all of that next door which they already are now but you will think you have more room to be noisy because you have background noise. So one of the things to be aware of when you get into any kind of noise masking or sound masking environment, come on, it's gotta be an off, there's the off button, is thinking you have privacy versus understanding privacy are two different things. The reality is in modern buildings, they're not addressing this issue. They haven't updated the building code in a long time. Personally, I think they should be designing uh, demising walls between apartments at STC 65 would be appropriate. 
They should have rules about how close a flat screen TV can be to an actual party wall between a bedroom and let's say a living room space. They should lay the apartments out differently so that bedrooms and certain uses don't back up to each other. And they need to then follow construction because for example, the building I was just testing was testing out at about 42, was designed at 50. What happened there is an older building up at the top and you'll see it in this little video clip, there's plank wood, which was the old ceiling in the building. And in between each plank, there's a gap. And when they built the walls below it, they didn't seal up all of those gaps. Plus above that wood is an attic. And all that's in that attic is a piece of plywood on top of that slat wood and some insulation. And it's the other apartment. So when we were testing, we found a majority of the losses of the existing wall are going over the top through all of that construction to the other side. And then there were also holes around some piping for radiators and a whole bunch of other areas. We found literally holes between the spaces. But even when we fix all of that, you still got this guy and you can't get rid of him by anything other than finding a way to cover him up by doing something to make him go away.